Welcome back to Watchbox Studios. I'm in Dubai. This is Yusuf Gargash, one of the founding you. members of the Dubai Watch Club. Um, this is awesome. Yusuf is my new best friend, by the way. I'm sorry whoever hears that and feels, you know, things happen. I've uh, been here for a while and I, I've met Yusuf maybe three or four times. Since yeah, quite a bit here. actually. Since you guys opened up, I, like, I think I should just work there at the stage. Yeah, maybe, you know, I, I may have your business cards already <laughs> on the way. We'll, we'll get into that. Um, so we're here. It's Dubai Watch Week. All things watches are here. And Yusuf is part of the Dubai Watch Club, which is a amazing community of really cool guys, to be honest with you. I met yeah. a few members. Um, Shout out to Mansoor, who's getting married probably yep, a couple of days. Yeah, popping it, into it, his it, wedding tomorrow. It, 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 Thanks, Mansoor, for you know arranging your wedding on uh, Dubai Watch Week. <laughs> it, it's, it's I, so I'll see you later after this. <laughs> it, it, it's amazing. I was talking to Mansoor. He's like, "Well, I have my wedding, but it's Dubai Watch Week, and he's trying to get out of it." But obviously, that's not a that, that's not an excuse uh -uh, to use with uh -uh. the wedding. He, he can't get out of it. He's <laughs> done. He, he's he's locked in, man. He's locked in. Oh man! So you said you've brought a really cool collection here. Let's, uh, first I want to say, I want to ask you one question, I ask everybody, mm. what got you into watches? What was, what was the thing that turned the light switch? What was the moment when you got bit by that bug and you just said, I love timepiece? Time I mean, I mean, I mean, honestly, look, as, as guys, you know, we don't really have jewelry, right? It's true. And I mean, you can accessorize so much, a ring or a bracelet or a beaded bracelet or whatever you want to call it, or. I don't know, like random stuff, right? And the only thing that really does stand out for men is really a watch. And you can tell so much about a guy, but what watch he wears. Um, but what makes watch collecting even more interesting, in my view at least, I mean, it's just the way you collect. I think there's an art in collecting. I mean, I, my wife considers me as a hoarder, which I am. I collect multiple things, not just watches, but watches is one of my main passions. And there is an art to collect. You just don't just go into any flea market or an eBay or go to auctions, just buy whatever's, you know, just off the bat. No, I think you should make each watch memorable. Buy every watch for a certain occasion or like I, I it took me a, a couple of years to like learn that mistake. Yeah. I had much more at the time, but you know, since I got married, I had to <laughs> clear up a few of the watches. Can you down a little bit and focus on the, the, the ones you really want? <laughs> yeah. So, again, like, I'd say what really got me into watches was my first actual luxury wristwatch, which was from my uncle, which is right over here, actually, is um, this Explorer, Explorer 2, 2005, got it for my graduation, just gave it to me, and honestly, this is kind of the watch that got me started, yeah. technically speaking, right? But then again, if I were to say the first official watch I ever bought, funny enough, was not even a wristwatch. It was a pocket watch, and I bought it out of a, a vintage store in London. I, I don't have it on me because I took it in for servicing. It's a Grosvenor, brass case, nothing special. Uh, I mean, literally costed me 20 quid, yeah. just 20 pounds. Ju I just saw it, I was like, okay, I'll just buy it. You know, it looks cool. I love that. You know, and just bought it, and now I'm taking it in for servicing. Once it's done, I'll just keep it on my desk at, yeah. at the office or something. Just, you know, just as a reminder, as that was kind of my first watch purchase. Exactly, the thing that got you yeah. started. What, what I love about all your watches, you definitely wear your watches, right? Yeah. But the condition of all these pieces are really, really good. Um, let, let's, let's pick another one here. This is like, this is a real candy tray. I, I mean, yeah. You, so you what go. do you want to talk about? I'll tell um, you, I think most of them do have a story behind them. So. so so let's do the Dubai Watch Week edition first. Just, uh, the, the Dubai Watch Club. Yeah, the, yeah. So we have Club two season. that we made. Uh, this was the first one that we made, which was with, the J, with JLC. Uh, it's a tri-date meteorite dial. So what makes this one special, they, made only, they only made seven for the club. Uh, so the darker meteorite dial was meant for the gold. Yes. Uh, for the gold case, but what they did was they swapped the darker dial to stainless steel. And yeah, I mean, this was the first actual project us working as, as, as a club to purchase from a major brand. And this is fantastic, this is phenomenal. So, so did you pr approach them with the idea? Uh, or did well, we approached them, yes, because we, I mean, again, we, we do a lot of events with them and with other brands as well. And one of the thing is the benefits of doing these events with the club is we get to speak to the right Directly, people, yeah. 
right? And of course, we go through the right channels. You know, we approach them saying, listen, we want to make a special piece. Is it possible? And then, you know, the rest is history, really. I mean, of course, this took like two years in the making, like just to... Well worth the wait, man. I mean, it was great. It was perfect, to be honest. I mean, I still... The, the darker meteorite really, really comes out. And you, you, you can't find these. You know, even in normal versions, like everybody's... From what I heard, they up. discontinued them at and this stage. Yes, they, they have. They ran out of meteorite. You know, so if a meteorite lands in your backyard... Mm. Go to jail, see maybe you can you can catch a little fine penny. Maybe. And this is just, I I love this watch. I love JLC. I love the complication, and that dial is just out, outstanding. What makes the dial more interesting is that, the, as you know, with meteorite, you can't really make two dials the same. So it's always going to be that one aspect that's going to add that uniqueness to it. So that was kind of an idea behind it as well. The second one actually was uh, this one is actually a really interesting project. We worked with Roger Dubuis. Uh, this is a homage, stainless steel, uh, red sunburst, um, Indo-Arabic numerals, Geneva seal, signed at the back by Roger Dubuis as well. Uh, we may we worked on with the brand. We end up having 28 pieces made. Nice, um, Tradici you know, traditional number for Dubuis. Yeah, so we did 28 pieces, and I remember he, uh, Roger Dubuis before he passed away. May he rest in peace. Uh, he uh, he actually came to Dubai and. The guy's a rock star, man. Yeah. I mean, if you see some of his older stuff, it's just Amazing. phenomenal. Amazing. Like last Dubai Watch Week, he, uh, there was a, a collector that popped in. He was wearing a stunning, stunning stainless steel chronograph salmon dial Ooh. from his earlier years before he formed Roger Dubuis. Bef his, before his early stuff else. is some of the best vintage hunting in my Gorgeous, opinion right now. Stunning. And I some think of his, it's like late and, '90s pieces as well. Really, really nice. It's amazing. I'll have to say. So, and plus, the, the cool thing about this is that this is never going to be made again. So we got full exclusivity on the design and the works on it. So that's great. Oh, that's thank amazing. you, Roger Dubuis, for, the, for everything. And also thank JLC as well for also working with us. Bless them. That's um, awesome. Um, let's go. We got some nice Rolexes on it. Let, let's go with this, this little day just there. Right? That's an interesting <laughs> piece. So to my knowledge, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to come out and say information that that I'm 100% sure, but to my knowledge, as I've spoken to Siddiqui about this watch, this was uh, this is one of the new modern logo UAE logoed watches in the market now. And these were, I think, if what Mohammed told me was correct, was they requested it, I think, in 2012, 2014, um, to have them made. And they only made 60 pieces, 30 in the 41 and 30 in the 36. Wow. So, and my uncle's a minister. I mean, he had benefits, I guess. Uh, right. Bless him. He, 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 uh, I met up with him in New York and DC. Uh, sorry, not New York, sorry, in Washington DC. And we were walking around. And he mentioned it, and I was a bit taken aback because, as you know, Rolex doesn't take mm -hmm. commission work no, or does dials or anything yeah, for anyone. The, the last logo dial stopped, you know, somewhere like in, in the nineties. You know, so, yes. it's hard to find real ones that were actually done by the brand. That, yeah, that's the trick. Like even the older UAE logos are original Rolex dials, but they were done by dial makers. Yes. So. They're not really 100% official, but they are kind of like accepted because these were corporate gifts. So this was, the idea was, this is by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs here in the UAE, and this was given out as a corporate gift. So I was lucky to have one. And funny enough, I, I received this during Watch Week last time, and uh, I had just purchased another watch at the time. I can't remember for the life of me what watch it was, but I just, I, my dad calls me, he goes, oh, uh, your uncle left you something. Uh. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you know, I'm wondering, because we had a talk about it. He's like, I'll send you one. And I didn't really take him seriously. So I get home and I see this bag from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and gift wrapped with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs wraps and stuff. And I open it up. I'm like, <gasps> that's a great gift. So, that, that is a great, uh, great present to th open th up. Thank you, for Uncle, sure. for this watch. This will never leave my, uh, leave if my collection. If you like another nephew, feel free. You know, I'm, you know, I'm available. You know, we can try. Can we can try. We can try. <laughs> oh man, so many cool things. We have to pay respect to this, the, the hoyers that we have here. Uh, Tell me a little yes. bit about so, you and your relationship with Tag. So my relationship with Tag was. Um, it's kind of, it was, it just happened, to be honest. It wasn't like there was a buildup or anything. I met one of the people uh, that works with TAG in the Middle East, in the region, and bless her, Anne Claire, bless her. She was very sweet. And uh, I remember she was wearing the Monza when it first came out. Ooh. It was a, she had a prototype. And um, <laughs> I was like, how much are you selling the prototype? Exactly, I was saying you try to buy it off of wrist. And over time, you know, 
because I started first buying Camaros. That was my first entry into the vintage Hoyer, um, vintage Hoyer market. And then over time, I saw this in an auction. It was in, um, if I'm not mistaken, it was Watches of Knightsbridge. And uh, they had one that was a full set. And I was like, and it had a ghost bezel. I'll explain why it has a new old stock bezel now. So I bought it, and then I was invited to go to the Collector Summit when they issued out the Otavia, mm -hmm. new Otavias that came out at the time. And it was 2016, if I'm not mistaken. And I brought this and a few other pieces with me. And um, as I was there, there was a problem with, I think it was the movement. And they said, okay, we can take it in. We'll fix it up for you. I was like, oh, do you have a new old stock bezel? They're like, yeah, sure, we'll send it to you. We'll, we'll have it fixed and we'll send it back. And honestly, I've never looked back. I mean, they have a great, great vintage department over there. They, yeah, they do the, a really good job. And the, and the parts that they have, it's insane. It's like a treasure trove. To well, well, and that Camaro, I saw you wearing one of your Camaros on the bracelet the other day. And like, again, perfect condition, but like, they mm -hmm. made such great watches. And I love that they're investing Funny, in that, their that one I actually purchased from um, uh, Andre Rare Birds. Thank you, Andre. <laughs> and, uh, just great man I, I i fell in love with the watch and the fact that now it's come back fully serviced with a new old stock bezel i'm really happy with the watch yeah well, i mean what, what more can you want on and the, the one next shot? to it was actually because i worked with them on another event which was the globetrotter event with a few a few other big uh hoyer collectors and we end up meeting up with jean-claude beaver and the man is just brilliant he's great yeah it's i mean uh, it's like looking at the greats. If you if you talk about the watch industry, he is one of the greats. Yeah, you I'm, know, I'm like, chasing. He, he's here at Dubai Watch Week. I'm chasing a meeting with him. So like, if you read it in newspapers, you know, Guy Fain's have to meet in John Claude Beaver. It's me. You know, just, uh, I'm just giving you like a preemptive. It's gonna happen. He's super chill. Yeah. He's super nice though. Like wonderful human being. Great mind. M veteran in the uh, like, real veteran radical marketeer. thinker. You know, which I love. Very about radical. It. Real uh, pushed it. So we worked on an event called Globetrotter, and what happened was they basically chose 10 cities to bring their vintage museum pieces in to showcase in the main boutiques and bring in some collectors. So I was one of the, I was a collector representing Dubai. Uh, at the time, I was actually gonna do another event for them, which was like, at, during that same event, which is doing a Globetrotter event for 10 days. Mm -hmm. Go to the 10 different cities oh, wow. in 10 days and do a full globe, but never went through. It was just- That's a lot of air miles. <laughs> it's just, you know, it would have been hectic. Yeah. You know, and I, I just decided, you know what, let's just stick to just stick to Dubai. Yeah. Let's not try to, you know, um, go out of our way. I think I think everyone's gotten the picture. And then Christmas, they I said they send me a box and I open it and I'm like, I see a lot of these accessories, whatever. And I see this box. I open it. I'm like, no way. So on the back, it has my initials. And uh, it's like Hoyer Globetrotter, thank you, YHG. Oh, that's awesome. So thank you, Tag, for this wonderful gift. And uh, this is probably one of the nicest gifts I've ever received from any of the brands for free. Of yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, what I love about you and your story and the Dubai Watch Club is like it's a real community and everybody's like so nice, so inviting. And you guys work with brands, you do events, you invite more people. Yeah. It's not just about like, oh, we're the Dubai Watch Club yeah. and we're super exclusive. It's like, no, we're just a group of friends who It's really a social enjoy group. Watches. Look, the idea of Dubai Watch Club is not us being pretentious or saying, no, you have to pay a member fee or this and that. The idea is a social group. Uh, we literally meet up, if not every day, every, every two, three days, you know, basically. We go to the shisha, or go to a coffee shop, go to a restaurant. Uh, or hang out someone's place, you know, it's, again, it, I, but the main thing is what draws us all together is watches, literally. Yeah. So that is kind of the idea. We have 90 members in our club. Um, not all of them are based in Dubai. We do have a lot from different parts of the world. And yeah, I mean, it's great. It's I can't really complain. All right, so we've got to wrap it a little bit, but you okay. have some really cool Rolexes here. So tell me about this beautiful green. Uh, the beast data. <laughs> So this was a funny story, actually. This was in Christie's when they just started uh, in Dubai doing the auctions. And um, it came up on uh, during the auction room. And I was kind of like, in the beginning, this is like my early days of collecting. And I saw it and I was like, ah, I'm just gonna, I was that jerk that just jacks up on the price yeah. just to like, you know, whatever, <laughs> just right? Just it up a little bit more. And uh, all of a sudden it stops and it, it, hit, it hammered at $16,000. And I just sold a few watches. I'm like, God damn it. Wow, that's what you get. <laughs> and, um, I was like, God damn it, you know, I, I just wanted to keep the cash and all that stuff. 
And over time, I tried selling it. Then I was like, you know what? I'll just customize a green strap and I'm just going to wear it, rock it, right? And over time, the price went up. Yep. And I'm like, well, that's a good mistake. Yeah, th th this is one of the real beautiful stories where you get something and like you're like, uh, you and kind the beach of regret, was, uh, and then it's just like, oh, I like yeah. the price, I'll keep it. And the beaches are so hard um, on the market, and now they're getting so strong. It's and crazy. Now, like, it's crazy. I'm sure if you wore this around, do I watch it? People just try to bite off your wrist. It, it, it's, it's insane. It's crazy. It's insane. And then the other, the other two. So this one actually, I actually uh, traded it in from another purchase I got from Tarek Momentum. Um, I had a. a I had a Fuchsia uh, uh, GMT 1675 mm -hmm. that I swapped it for this. This is a 1675 first million series. Um, Beautiful patina, by the uh, way. Like, ph mm, phenomenal. Mm. A box, papers, ribbed bracelets, the whole shebang, everything. And he gave me a new old stock Arabic discs to go with it. And it was just great, man. I, I'm like, I haven't looked back since. Like, he has some crazy stuff as well, just off the bat. Uh, it's just a great watch to have, honestly. Oh, beautiful. Tell me, last but not least, is beautiful. Uh, 5513. 5513. So this will never leave my collection because I got it off a very close friend of mine. Oh, yeah, you did um, tell me. Oh, yeah, yeah. So what that's... happened was uh, he had it on a strap, and at the time, he got, a, he got a number of watches from a guy that owed him money. So he's like, I, I just want the cash. I prefer the cash over the watches. And he's a watch collector himself, but he doesn't deal in used or worn watches. So this was literally the first vintage watch I ever got. Wow. Technically, well, yeah, it yeah. is. Actually, it is <laughs> my first. <laughs> and um, so I approached him. I'm like, how much do you want to sell it for? And it was just watch head and it was on a strap. How much are you selling it for? He goes, oh, you give me a number. So I gave him a number off the bat and he said, okay. And um, I don't know if I should disclose the price because no, no, it's, it's let's too good not. Of a price. <laughs> let's not. Let's not go there. It was a deal I, sh I, I couldn't refuse. So. Yeah, I took it off him and then I just got a bracelet and box and had it serviced and here we go. And I have an extra ghost bezel for it. So I haven't looked back since. It's amazing. It's so great. Yusuf, thank you so much, you know, for talking with me. Before we leave, if you yeah. had one tip to give to a collector who's about to, you know, jump in, they're watching this video, they're about to jump into the world of watch collecting, what is that one tip that you would give them? Don't go crazy when you, um, if you have the cash, don't go crazy buying everything. Yeah. I say handpick, buy for a reason. Don't buy just for the sake of buying. Don't buy because, oh, everyone's having it. No, buy something that you are convinced by. Uh, there's no such thing as a bad watch, just a bad price. So just buy what you like, really. I agree. I always say buy what you love. Yusuf, it was a pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you for having me, good man. Times. Thank you so much, fans, for coming in uh, and viewing Watchbox Studios. And, um, you know, see you later.